Welcome back to another Shotcut video editing tutorial. In this video, we'll be adding text as a text overlay on top of our video, and also adding text title screens. Um, I'm actually remaking this video. The last one I made, I was having issues with Shotcut crashing when I was trying to do some of the animation, and um, like animating text, having it move on the screen. Uh, the, it, the reason was, as someone pointed out on YouTube, uh, I was using an outdated version. So the version I'm using now is the latest version. Um, the nice thing about open source software is it's always continually being updated. And um, so hopefully, I haven't, I'm actually just remaking this for the first time. I haven't tested to see if the bugs are, are fixed, but hopefully we don't have that same crashing issue we were having last time. So to add text, it's actually a filter. So we bring a video into our timeline. While it's selected in red, we just click Add, and it's a video filter. It's uh, just called Text. And that adds some text. By default, it adds the time code. So if we hit Play, it just shows the current time of the video. We can also we can erase that. We can do frame, so it shows the current frame rate of the video. Not incredibly useful for most projects, but there are some different things you can just click here that are sort of variable to your video file. You can also obviously just type in your own text though. So we say my video, and we can change the color of the text. So if we want it to be a different color, maybe we want it to be like this red here. We can change the actual font by clicking here. We can choose a, a different type of font that we like, and um, the, you can also change the font size in here, but I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. To change the size, you can either come down here and click and just change these numbers manually, or you can resize here by coming in the top right or left or bottom corner and resize it. There's also a handle in the middle. You can move the text around. If you get it sort of maybe off screen or somewhere you don't want, you can always reset it by just coming over here and clicking this little like reset button, that just restores everything to how it was before. So we have position and size. There's also an outline that's set to zero right now, the thickness. If we bring that up, we can see it gets this kind of black, thick uh, outline stroke on the text, and we can change that color as well. Uh, and then, I'm going to take that down because I don't love it. Oh, I always make that mistake. I hit the enter key, which toggles between our project and our source. So go back into project, everything's there. If ever, you, if maybe you do the same thing, if you hit enter while you're on this, it'll everything goes away and you're like, what's going on here? But it's because it takes you back to source. We need to go back to project. Um, anyway, so if we can now, we can change this. So the vertical lift, if we go top, it orients the text to the top, middle, and bottom. And that's if it's constrained in that orientation. If we constrain it this way, we can go left, right, or center. So there's multiple ways to move this text around. Um, I would say just leave everything, maybe just, I like to leave it centered actually, and then I can just move this box around and it kind of behaves the way I, I think it should. I should have showed this first maybe because with the animation, there's a different presets here, but it'll reset all the coloring and um, any changes we made to the font. But if we go like slide in from bottom left and go back, go to the beginning, the text will animate in Oh, what is this? Slide or slide in from bottom, not left. This is just slide in from bottom. So the text sort of animates in there, and we see that um, there was a slide in from uh, here. Slide in from left. So kind of the same thing. So there's some different ways that you can do that. Uh, if you want to make changes to that, we'll touch on this more in a future video. But we go to keyframes, and we can actually change here the speed that that comes in. So right now it comes in fairly quickly. We can click on this handle here. There's sort of this black triangle shaded area. So now it'll be much, much slower as it animates in. Again, we'll touch more on that. That's under this keyframes tab, not under the timeline. It's under keyframes. Okay, one more thing we're going to try and do. So we'll keep this here, but let's go into add a, uh, a title screen. There's a couple ways to do it. If we go up, up to here to open other, we can just open a color and we can just choose. Right now it's transparent. We can choose like a black color. And then all of a sudden we have just this black in here. We can bring it over to our playlist, and then we can always just bring it down. Do we have this? Yeah, so we should be able to bring this down and insert it into our video clip. So I didn't do that in the right place, but that's okay. We'll just erase this. So now we have some, some empty blackness right before our video, and then it kind of jumps into our video here. So we can, get, we can select this clip, we can go to filters, we can go to add text, and we can put text right onto this clip, just like we would if it were a video clip. <clears throat> Let me show you another way to do it, though. If we delete this, we can also go to Open Other, and we can just go to Text. 
What that does is by default it opens up a background with text already on it and we can put our own text. So we can say this is my video and then we choose the color of the background. This time maybe let's do a darker blue color uh, and then we just hit OK. And now we have a, uh, well, so this is just up here in our sources. If we navigate away from it we'll lose it. So we can left click and bring the whole clip into our playlist in case we ever want to grab it again because now if we click up here we're on something else so we get back to it and then we can drag it down into our timeline. And so now we have this uh, text on, on the back of blue. And someone brought up too, when we, when we touch on transitions, with this ripple select um, or this ripple trim and drop, this lets it so if we move forward it'll just automatically push forward everything. If this were not selected, we would create a transition between these two. Uh, and, and when bringing in clips, it behaves differently as well. So play with toggling this on and off. I think I, I didn't touch on that too much when I was going over that at the beginning. Uh, yeah, let's see what this looks like. This will be a, like a fade, cross-fade transition <laughs> with text. Anyway, hopefully you found that informative. And as you can see, we did some, we played with it, nothing crashed. So um, a huge shout out to the Shotcut developers for always continually um, improving this software. If you find the, the software useful, um, consider visiting um, Shotcut, uh, the official website. I'll include the link in the description of this video uh, to show your support for this software and for the developers. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video.